One of the top items on the president's legislative agenda is the repeal and replacement of Obamacare. Health and Human Services Secretary Dr. Tom Price joins us from Atlanta to give us an update. Uh, update. Secretary Price, the president said uh, that he would have a replacement for the Affordable Care Act on day one, and then more recently he said it was more complicated an issue health care than anyone would have guessed. Where, do, where does the president's plan stand at this point? John, thanks so much. Good to be with you today. Uh, before I uh, answer that, let me just say that, that it is an incredible privilege for me to serve as the Health and Human Services Secretary. And the mission of HHS is, is to improve the health and safety and well-being of the American people. And right now, across the country, there are many individuals who have a challenge from health care access and, and uh, cost of insurance. Uh, in the individual and small group market. And that's what we want to focus on. And there are literally millions of folks who have either uh, aren't able to afford their insurance or are paying premiums. The premiums are up 25% over the last year, almost 100% over the last three to four years. So what we want to make certain is that we're being true to the principles of health care, which is a system that's accessible for everybody and affordable for everybody and of the highest quality making sure we incentivize innovation and empowering patients through both transparency and accountability. So that's the plan we've been working on and we look forward to moving it uh, uh, very, very soon. The president has, has said uh, the following about what the plan will, uh, will do. He said it will offer better care for more people at lesser cost. He said people will have access to the doctor that they want and the plan that they want and it will be paid for without touching Medicare. Is all of that still true? Uh, absolutely. And I think it's important for the American people to appreciate. In the speech that the president gave uh, this past Tuesday night, uh, what he did was outline the priorities for the American people. They want a system where the states have the flexibility and authority is returned to the states for the regulation of, of health coverage. They want to make certain they can buy across state lines. They want to make certain that pre-existing illness and, and injury is not, it, it makes certain it's covered from, from an insurance standpoint. They want drug prices to come down. He said something also very important about lawsuit abuse. He said that we ought to address the issue of lawsuit abuse and the practice of defensive medicine where we're wasting hundreds of billions of dollars every single year. And so these are the priorities that the president has outlined. They're consistent with the priorities that we're moving forward with at uh, Health and Human Services. Uh, and we're very, very excited about the opportunity to once again respond to the needs and the concerns and, and, and the fears, frankly, of the American people about the health care system that they currently find themselves in. One of the fears that people currently on the Affordable Care Act have is that they will not have it after these reforms are put in place. And there seems to have been kind of different uh, claims about whether the 20 million or so who are on it will be able to continue their coverage. Some uh, people in the administration have said, absolutely, yes, they will be covered. Others have said, that's a goal. Those are two different things. Which is yeah. it? Well, I think what, well, our, our goal is to make certain that every single American has access to affordable coverage that's of the highest quality. You know, what's oftentimes missed, John, is, is that there are 20 million Americans across this land who, who are exposed to the penalty, or have either chosen to take the penalty, not purchasing insurance, or taken a, a waiver. And the reason is because the federal government has dictated to individuals what they must buy, what kind of health coverage they must purchase. So what our goal is, what the president's goal is, is to give people choices, to let them purchase the kind of insurance that they want for themselves and for their family, not what Washington forces them to buy. This is a real important distinction between where we are right now in that individual and small group market and where we want to go. So if I'm on the Affordable Care Act now, I don't have to worry about losing coverage. It's not going to become so expensive uh, that I won't be able to afford it. Well, it is becoming expensive right now. As I mentioned, the premiums are going up, the deductibles. If you're a, if you're a guy or a gal out there, you're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, you got a couple kids, uh, you know, your premium, by and large, is somewhere between eight and $12,000 a year. You don't have that kind of money. So you may have a card, you may have an insurance card, but you don't have care because you can't afford the deductible in order to, to, to get the kind of care that you need. So but the, our goal is to bring those costs down. And the way that you do that, again, is through flexibility, through allowing states to have the flexibility to, to care for their vulnerable populations as they see fit, choices for, for patients all across this land, making certain that they can purchase what they want, not what Washington says they must buy, uh, making certain that the doctors are able to provide the kind of care that they believe to be most important, not, again, responding to what Washington tells them they must do. So we've got a lot of wonderful opportunities to make certain, again, that the American people are able to afford the kind of care that they want. Final quick question on Medicare, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Speaker Paul Ryan said that it may still be an open question about whether President Trump really doesn't want to touch Medicare. 
Um, is that an open question? Might there be a backdoor way that the president will go back on his campaign promise not to touch it, either for current retirees or for anybody in the future? What's the final bottom line here? Well, I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what's not an open question is that is that we believe in the guarantee of Medicare for our, for our seniors. Uh, the challenge that we have, as you well know and your viewers know, is that Medicare is, is uh, it, as some po folks have said, going insolvent or going broke. Within a 10-year period of time, we won't have the money in the Medicare program to be able to pay the benefits to seniors in this country that has been promised to them. We don't think that's appropriate. So we believe in, strongly in the guarantee of Medicare and make certain that it's a viable, financially secure program going forward so that seniors now and in the future know that it will be there for them. All right, Mr. Secretary, sounds like a guarantee with perhaps some, some changes, maybe, maybe not. But we're out of time. I really appreciate you being with us, and we'll be right back. Thanks, John. Good to be with you.